Hey guys, it's Miss Champagne. I wanted to do something a little different this week for social studies. The majority of you were with me last week doing the live Zoom. So in real time, I would go over the lesson and you could chat or answer. But this week I want to pre-record and send it out and have you watch the video. And then Monday when we do our live Zoom, April 27th at one, I want you to come prepared with your answers already. And then we'll just have a whole discussion of your answers. I will have given you days already to look at the sources, um, play back this video. I'm going to be sending you the link to this video um, through a YouTube link. And you will be able to play back as much as you want. I do ask that you do copy the questions down um, just so that you have them organized and together. Um, but we'll go over that as we get into the video. So I will pull up the So here we have um, our Social Studies Unit 5 Lesson 2, and we this week are going to be looking at motivations for entering the French and Indian War. If you were with us last week, then you know that we talked about George Washington going to the Ohio River Valley, um, and a little bit we had just been introduced to the French and Indian War, the people involved. Um, so this week we're looking at motivations for entering the French and Indian War, the reasons why. Um, so in today's lesson, we are going to look at expectations and materials. So our expectations, you are to find a quiet spot to work, somewhere where you can focus um, and stay focused on the lesson. Take notes throughout the video to help you, especially within the sources. Um, that way you can better answer the questions, especially key details and information, things we've always discussed in class. And lastly, listen and follow directions as the video plays to ensure you are hearing all important details and questions. I'd hate for you to miss any bit of it, but again, if you do, you can always play it back. Materials need it, loose leaf sheet of paper, proper heading, um, number your questions in order so we stay organized, and a pencil. So what will we be learning today? Well, our agenda, we are going to introduce the topic for lesson two. We're gonna review lesson one's uh, notes, objectives, everything that we had discussed. We're gonna analyze sources today or continue as we do with social studies. Then we will answer questions related to the sources that we are reading. Um, but instead of me directly answering them, I'm gonna have you copy the questions and then I want you to try and answer them. And then when we meet Monday, you should already have your answers and come prepared. I will not be giving them. We will be working them together um, and I will be discussing them with you. So again, please have those ready come Monday if you plan to join me in the live. We're gonna look at a vocabulary video regarding the French and Indian War and questions that go along with the video. And then again, reflection and closure and wrap up our lesson. So today our standard and outcome is written in an I can objective. So I can describe the impact of key people, ideas, events that led to the French and Indian War. So I put impact in red, um, more so to put an emphasis on the strong effect or the influence of it. Um, so what was the impact of the key people? And today our key people will be um, the French, indigenous cultures, um, the British and the colonists. So the impact of all these key people, ideas, so the purpose, the plan, um, the goal, the intentions behind everything, and events, something that happens especially of importance, so what important events um, involved um, that led to the French and Indian War. So when we tie all this together, uh, we're gonna look at the effect of the people, the ideas, and the events that ultimately led to the French and Indian War. So what is the purpose of this specific lesson? So this activity is designed to have students explain what were the French, British, and the British colonists' motivations for entering into the French and Indian War. What were their reasons why? And they each had their specific reasons. So we're gonna dive deeper into why. Why did each um, party of people decide to join in? So our last lesson on Let's Review, um, in our previous lesson, we discussed why George Washington was sent to the Ohio River Valley. 
and we know that he was sent there um, to provide the British with information about French's establishment along the Ohio River Valley. Uh, we examined various sources to find evidence that would support Dinwiddie's claim as to why the British colonies needed to send military forces to the Ohio Valley to protect their claims to the region. Um, so we looked at why did the French have forts along the river, and it was to better equip themselves to be able to take um, over the entire river. They were building down the river. Um, and we looked at why did the French and the British and Indians want control of the forts on the river? Um, because whoever had control basically controlled all travel and trade that took place in the river. Um, so those were just a little bit of things that we discussed in lesson one. So I will be reading the sources and we'll be discussing um, key notes, details, um, and I'll always do this with the class. And sometimes I'll stop and ask them, okay, what is something else that we notice? Um, but in this case, I will uh, kind of with my mouse circle or underline or discuss as to why, um, and then read the question aloud. And the students will copy the questions and I'm not revealing the answers. They will copy the questions, try to answer them on their own, and then Monday on our live, we'll answer them in real time. So source one, adapted from a letter to George Washington and Lieutenant Governor Dinwiddie, the following are the instructions that Lieutenant Governor Dinwiddie gave to George Washington as Washington and his men left Virginia for the Ohio Valley. And this is obviously a little excerpt from it. So he is saying you are to act on the defensive but in case any attempts are made to obstruct the works or interrupt our settlements by any persons whatsoever, you are to restrain all such offenders and in case of resistance to make prisoners of or kill and destroy them. So basically he is saying, um, he, Lieutenant Governor Dinwiddie gave George Washington's instructions um, to act when he gets there to act on the defensive. So to protect himself, to justify himself. Um, but in any case of attempts are made to obstruct, which means block or stop. So anytime someone tries to block or um, stop George Washington, the works or interrupt the settlements by any persons whatsoever, the Lieutenant Governor is saying to George Washington, you are to restrain them, meaning um, prevent. So you are to prevent all such offenders and in this case of resistance, meaning if they're not wanting to comply, you're to make them a prisoner of or kill and destroy them. Um, so again, the question says, based on source one, which is what we just read, describe what motivated the British colonists to send a military force to the Ohio Valley. And again, this not only ties back into this source right here, but our previous lesson, um, what were reasons they needed to send British colonists, um, I'm sorry, what motivated the British colonists to send a military force to the Ohio River uh, to protect them. And I would pause the video right here and I would give the student time to copy the question and move on and then come back and answer. Okay, source two, uh, the French ambassadorial party. So the French who had been captured by Washington insisted that they had been an ambassadorial, which means a representative of one country sent to negotiate a treaty. So the French who had been captured by him insisted they had been sent to, or sent by the French king to order the British from their territory, so to get them off. This was much like Washington's first mission to the Ohio Valley. Remember, he was trying to get um, the French off the land and that's when they sent in the British, the British military force. And the French handed Washington a letter and papers as proof to their mission. Washington did not believe the French claims to be an ambassadorial party and stated that if they were really on a diplomatic mission, they would have presented themselves to the British rather than hiding in Jumonville Glen, which is a place. Um, so basically a diplomatic mission um, is kind of, they are being sent from one other place or international place uh, by someone, and in this case, by the French king to or on orders. So he, George Washington is basically saying he doesn't believe them or else they would have presented themselves to the British rather than hiding. So questions two says, based on source two, 
describe what motivated the French into sending more troops to start a war with the British. Again, this is where we would pause and copy the question and come back and reflect. All right, so source three adapted from Benjamin Franklin's grand design. In the American colonies, which are known as the 13 colonies, England's military security rested in no small part upon her traditional alliance. Um, basically, an alliance is a union formed between countries or an organization, and in this case, it's the Iroquois and the six Confederate nations. Their alliance had been based on trade and bonds between the English settlers, and her Indian allies had been stretched to a breaking point. The Iroquois saw the French using the break between Queen Anne and King George's wars to expand on the Mississippi and in the Illinois country. Their tension mounted with the French boldly established Fort Niagara on Lake Erie as a bastion against them, so kind of like a stronghold against them. Source four, the Delaware and the Shawnees. The Delaware and the Shawnees, Native American tribes, lived in the Ohio River Valley. They were traditional trading partners with the French and had been trading beaver belts for European weapons and goods. Over the years, they had seen the gradual push by British colonists who had taken land and had moved into the frontiers of the Ohio, Ohio country. After seeing the French defeat of General Braddock and his men at Fort Duquesne, the Ohio Native Americans allied with the French and conducted devastating attacks on frontier settlements in Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Um, and again, the questions will be on the next slide. So question three and four kind of go together. So based on source three and source four, describe what motivated Native Americans to enter the war between the French and the colonists. And again, pause the video and copy the question and later come back and reflect using the sources. And last source, source five, General Edward Braddock. Washington and his men, which now total 293 men, had stationed at Fort Necessity. And anyone who is in the military um, stationed means um, living there, assigned there, with your station somewhere, you were put there. Washington had been given reports that a large force of French and Native Americans were advancing, so moving forward to their location. Washington tried to rally some of the Native Americans to help his cause, but he was unsuccessful, so a big defeat. The next day, a, or a big failure. The next day, a force of 600 Americans to help his, the next day, a force of 600 French and another 100 Native Americans approached the fort. A battle occurred and the colonists were overcome by the French and the American forces. So, um, defeat, they lost. So the next day, a negotiation was made between the French and Washington. Washington surrendered um, and he and his men returned to Virginia. The French destroyed the fort by burning it and returned to Fort Duquesne. Hearing of Washington's defeat, the king sent General Edward Braddock and approximately 2,000 men to the colonies in an effort to protect the king's interests in North America. And last question for our source, question five, based on source five, describe what motivated the British to enter the war with the French. So we gotta pay attention to these keywords. So the British with the French. So again, I would pause right here and copy the question and then come back and use the source to answer your questions as best as they could. Okay, so now we're at a point where I will play a video for or off of vocabulary regarding the French and Indian War. So as the video plays, I want you to think about the following discussion questions that I have to the right of the screen. They will pop up throughout the video, but I have turned that um, function off. So the questions will remain on the screen right here so the video can continue through. So the first question, what do you think it was like for Native Americans when the French and British arrived in North America? In your own words, describe the dispute over the Ohio River Valley. So why were they all arguing and wanting this particular piece of property? Why do you think the British, French, and Native Americans were willing to fight so hard over land in North America? So as the video plays, I want you to ponder on these three questions. And then after the video, I want you to answer these questions. So again, copy, restate, answer. Um, and please number them, so keep them in order. And again, it is recorded, so you can always play this back if you don't remember specifically, um, as many times as you need. So let me, where is that real quick? Oops. Okay, that's 
Okay. So I'm going to. Everyone's trying to rise, ain't got no time to hide. Everyone's trying to rise, ain't got no time to hide. Everyone's trying to rise, ain't got no time to hide. Everyone's trying to rise, ain't got no time to hide. From Europe to the Americas, the British came looking for settlement. But the indigenous was already here living, they are the Native Americans. The French and Britain started fighting over land that they were swiping. The natives fought for both sides, then the British called on their colonists to fight for them. They were willing to go to war. Blood, sweat, and tears. The war of seven years. The natives were here. British didn't care. They colonized the land, took resources and wealth, and didn't want to share. Wanted it to themselves. France claimed some other land already. In the north and in the west, they had territory. They always traded with the natives, loved the first from their buddies, making the pretty penny. Things started getting ugly. Ohio River Valley, both the French and the British wanted it. French and natives were happy till British came interrupting it. French sent troops over to show who's running it. Natives got tired of colonists. Taking land like they discovered it. British didn't want to hear none of already it. Already had 13 colonies, but wanted more, so they told the French that they got to leave. French told them that they were their first dismissed. So the British declared war 1756. Everyone's trying to rise. They got no time to hide. Natives been divided before colonists arrived. Different indigenous tribes fought in that bit. So some sided with Britain while others sided with France. And record teamed up with the British. The Huron and other tribes teamed up with the French. And things were getting ballistic. They had common interests, the resources and riches, so they were willing. They were willing to go to war. War started. The French were in demand, in charge. Teams with indigenous tribes formed a dominant squad. Used their war tactics like camouflage. Defeated Britain for two years, beat them like ours. They won that battle, but the war wasn't over. In 1758, Britain regained hope. The Secretary of State sent lots of money to soldiers. Got native support from the Iroquois. It was over. Started attacking and capturing all the French force. They couldn't battle this force. The natives that the French lost. French surrendered and the British gained control, but spent so much on the war, now they were in the hole. So much debt that they couldn't afford. The land started taxing the citizens that won the war for them. Wow. Now known as Americans, was tired of being used, so they fought back. The American Revolution. Everyone's trying to rise, they got no time to hide. Native been divided before colonists arrived. Different indigenous tribes fought in that bit. So some sided with Britain while others sided with France. And record teamed up with the British. The Huron and other tribes teamed up with the French. And things were getting ballistic. They had common interests, the resources and riches. So they were willing, they to, were willing to go to war. Okay. So now that the video is over, I'm going to switch back over to PowerPoint. And the video is how they're going to answer these three questions, questions six, seven, and eight. They come specifically from the video. Um, there were five, but I only put three. So they would copy these and answer this. Again, they can play it back as much as they need. And our last slide, let's reflect and close. Um, so our standard, again, and our outcome, um, I can describe the impact of key people. So again, the French, the, Brit the British, the colonists, their ideas, and the events, what major events were happening um, in these sources, what ideas were they ha or coming up with in these sources that led to the French and Indian War. That's the overall outcome of this. So using these questions, reflect on today's lesson. Question nine, what are two to three examples of events that led up to the French and Indian War? Um, two is fine. If you can get two, great. If you can get three, great. So just anywhere in that number. 
Um, it will be in the sources, so if you can, can you quote the source as we normally would in class, according to blank source, um, and then cite your evidence. Question 10, what were the French, British, and British colonists' motivations for entering into the French and Indian War? Piggybacking off the questions that we've already answered inside the sources, this one's just a recap. So overall, what were the motivations for them entering into the war? Um, and that is it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on my mind, uh, text me, email. You should have all my contact information. Um, we miss you. We hope you're having a, I guess, great time at home as much as we can be. We can't get out and do much. Um, stay safe, everybody. And I hope you have a great week. And remember on this last slide that, I got some in this, that all work is due by Saturday, May 2nd. So that includes online instruction and our questions. So again, if you join on the Monday Live, you should be able to do it with us in real time. You'll take a picture of your work and send it to me as normal. Um, if you happen to miss the lesson, I can send the link um, and you can watch it with us and then submit your work to me through photos. Um, but again, if you have any questions, just reach out. Thanks.